Hi everyone, my name is Marius and welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm going to be showing you how I built this off-road camper at home, in my garage, in my spare time. Let's get to it! My goal with this video is to try and get everyone up to speed with the trailer built to the point where we are at now. After this, I will be uploading weekly videos sharing the journey of getting this camper finished and on the road, or maybe rather off the road. If this sort of build and off-road adventures interest you, then please join me and my family on this project. Meet my two boys, Carl and Aiden, and the fur monster is Troy. The camper might look like it's almost finished. Believe me, it's not, and there's still tons of fabrication to be done here. You'll see for yourself as we move along. Up next is a slideshow from where I started. Sorry for not having any video of the build, as I never once thought of documenting the build to share it. This purely came along from Finch sharing some of the pictures on social media, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. People want to see more of it, hence the start of this YouTube channel. Starting now, I will video and document every aspect till completion, with the roof section later on in this video being the first. Enjoy! The project started with me buying a 2.5 ton axle with running brakes, some wheels with tires. I needed to get the exact measurements in order to check the ground clearance and get all the other dimensions from them needed in order to start my designs and drawings. The chassis was built at my friend's house, as he is a qualified welder, and I needed him to weld up the frame for legal and licensing purposes later on. The cutting, layout and lining up of the frame was done by me. He was the guy swinging and burning away with a welding torch. Now with the main chassis back in my garage, the first batch of laser cutting was ready for collection and I could start building my camper. This project was my very first time using a program to create and export a DXF file for CNC laser cutters to cut from. This made me nervous as there was no way for them to check anything on their side. It was simply a case of load a sheet of steel into the CNC machine, load my file up and it would cut it. I had to pay up front so in the event that something was wrong or I missed some scale or export setting, it would be a total loss. And as you can see in the pictures, I ordered the whole outside shell, 12 full sheets of steel. Surely it would have been a better call to order a section or two and test the fitment, but no, Captain Marius went ahead with a complete order. Thank my lucky stars it worked. The saying of jumping in at the deep end and learning how to swim as you go along could not be truer, as I was in uncharted waters. On quite a few pieces I forgot to compensate for the wall thickness of the steel in my drawings. All of these had to be removed manually at home. Ask anyone, it sucks trying to remove 2mm of steel from a perfectly straight laser cut edge with a handheld angle grinder, but hey, you gotta do what needs to be done. As the going got tough, I even got the wife involved to help hold up some panels as I spot welded them into place. Luckily, she's the type of girl that doesn't mind getting her hands dirty and helping me with whatever I'm busy with. The recessed lip that you can see in all the openings was created by joining two pieces of angle iron in order to form a frame. This gave a lot of support and structure to the openings and also formed the base for the automotive grade rubber seal. This rubber would be used throughout the trailer to seal up all the doors and hatches. The large side door opens up the queen size bed with a canvas tent around it, while the front lid opens up the king size main bed, also enclosed with a canvas tent. The two side doors on either side both have slide out rail systems for easy access. The one housing four ammo storage boxes and the other the kitchen assembly and the fridge freezer. The center door opens up the pantry with two built in drop down tables. The pop up roof in these pictures was version 1 and also a proper failure. The roof being made out of steel entirely was way too heavy. Secondly, in the closed position there was not enough space for the canvas section to fold into meaning that the lifting hardware would end up cutting the canvas skirt. And lastly, after building the camper and sitting inside it, I saw that the roof opening could have been quite a bit bigger, which would make the whole inside feel a lot more roomier. I removed that one and made some new drawings. Let's go build version 2. Alright, so I'm going to work on a piece of the roof section now. When I get the steel from the laser cutter, it looks like this. So you can see here, all the lines are pre-cut onto it, so I will be folding on those cut lines. I left like little bridges in, you can see those two pieces there. That basically keeps it aligned for me, so when I weld it on later, it's already lined up. This gadget I built myself, uh, it's just a bending tool. Two angle irons welded on each other with a small slit that I can slide the steel into and then fold it over. 
And here we have Troy taking a casual stroll past the camera. Now that the four corners are tacked together, I can finally flip this thing over in order to bend the two uprights and then also the final lip which will form the base. Here you can see me using my homemade bending tool. The trick when using it is to go slowly and not try and achieve your final bend angle in one shot. This will leave the lip with a kink in it that's very hard to get out. Slow and steady wins the race. I have previously made a much longer version of this tool specifically for long sections like these. But in this messed up garage I can't find it, so a small one it is for now. Now that the uprights are bent and lines up nicely, I'm just going to spot weld the inside corners to keep everything in place so that I can bend the next lip, you'll see that in a bit. Onto the final lip that needs to be bent and folded over. This one will form the base of the roof, seeing as the roof is flipped upside down currently. It'll also be the lip that holds the rubber seal later on. And here you can see the two sides match up and it's nice, flat and even. Once that's welded, it's a strong 90 degree edge. Alright, now that I've got all the corners stacked up and bent, I really want to show you where the rubber goes. So you can see this is the, the underside of the roof. So once it's done, the rubber will slide on there. And then that's basically what it'll look like. The laser cutting and then bending on the cut method that I used throughout this build was the only way for me to get the angles and bends into the steel. If I had a nice bending brake press to fold full sheets of steel, that would have been so much easier, as then I didn't have to weld it back up and deal with all the heat distortion. The reason for going with this method was purely a case of working with what tools was available to me at the time. The amount of times I've struggled building items on this garage floor is now not funny anymore. The floor is not level and to top that it's not flat. So laying anything down gives you a nice seesaw effect. You push down on this corner to get it flat then the backside lifts up. This frustration has caused enough drama to have the neighbors hear me speak in some foreign languages from time to time. This time I'm using four individual legs so that I can adjust each corner to the right height giving me somewhat of an easier frame to work with. I know I'm going to get some serious flack for not having the right PPE on, but just hear me out. This was a nice sunny hot day and I cannot wear gloves when I'm lining up two edges. I don't know how people fabricate steelwork with gloves on all the time. Even the thin leather ones takes my ability away to really feel if the corner or edges lines up. When there's a lot of welding to be done, I do put on long sleeve shirt to stop the UV burn and wear some decent gloves, as then things really get hot. I have been burned a few times and I'm okay with that, rather than to tack it together with gloves on and then having to break them apart due to not being able to feel the edges or surfaces that needs to be flat or lined up. Please don't take any tips from my personal protective gear being used here, as this is not a safe way to do things, it's just my way. It always fascinates me seeing what a few beans in a sheet of steel can do for its stiffness and structure. These side skirts were flopping around like cooked spaghetti and after just a few bends, not even welded up and already you can't believe how rigid this thing is. So cool to see. And now we have the base of the roof spot welded together. I will use a frame to attach all the hinging hardware, gas shocks and handles for lifting the roof. Then I will cover the opening with a lightweight sheet of fiberglass just to keep the elements out. Fiberglass will have much better insulation properties than steel or aluminium when we are out in the elements. 
Now you should have a better understanding of how I built the rest of the camper. All the doors and angles you see on it was bent to shape using this method. The slideshow itself couldn't show the process of getting the angles into the sections. Due to my garage having a normal entry height door, the trailer with its wheels on will not fit through even if I deflate the tires to the bees. This is my routine every time the camper needs to go outside. It's a proper mission and a pain in the backside. Once the camp is completed though, that won't be a hassle, as I do have storage in my yard for it that has a 2.4 meter high door on it. That will leave me with loads of clearance for the roof to clear. These two round discs you see here are made out of plywood. It's my versions of the Flintstones wheel. They are just slightly larger than the brake drums to keep them from getting damaged while rolling over the floor. Just before I end this first episode, here's some final thoughts. I cannot take credit for the entire design of this camper. We have a couple of really good, reputable off-road camper manufacturers here in South Africa. In my opinion, they're just overpriced for what you get. A steel constructed caravan like this with some nice specs will cost you a cool half a million rand. That's around about 33,000 US dollars for comparison. But even if I could afford one, they all still have issues and niggles that I don't like. That's why I set out at building my own. I looked at all the best features from the leading ones and then designed my own camper along with adding some ideas that no one else had. Not to even mention saving a ton of money in doing so. In the end, it's about leaving some value behind. If anyone decides to build their own or any other camper or trailer, I'm sure they would find these videos helpful in some way. I'll get to learn a few things down below from you guys in the comment section and hopefully you'll get some good ideas from me. That way we all win. If you're still watching the video, thank you so much. Please like the video, share it and subscribe so you can follow along for the rest of the journey. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!